Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. In today's video, we have some adorable spring gnome DIYs that are perfect for your spring decor or to sell. So sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we are going to use this pattern of a spring gnome that I sketched out. I scanned it into the computer, blew it up, printed it out, cut it out, and now I'll take those pieces together to make my pattern. I will put a link below if you would like to have a copy to make one. Some white duck cloth. You could also use canvas or an old drop cloth some carbon paper. I got mine several years ago at Office Depot. It lasts forever, but you can also get it on Amazon or you can use the pencil trace method. Some acrylic paint in various colors. The colors that you need will just depend on how you want your gnome to look in the end, but I do suggest using acrylic paint. Some leftover garbage bags to use for stuffing. Some twine and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing we're gonna do is put our pattern together. Once you cut this out, you're gonna notice that you have quite a bit of overlap. I do that on purpose so that you can take this together and be able to know what goes where. Um, so don't worry about the overlap, just line it up and tape it together. Now up here at the top, this one um, I did have to play with a little bit to make it fit. I'm not sure what happened when I blew it up, but it didn't want to fit exactly. But if you keep playing, you'll get it pretty close so that you can use the pattern. Once I got it lined up, I put a piece of tape to hold it. Now we're going to take our pattern and we're gonna lay our fabric out and make sure that it's doubled. You want to cut two pieces of this. And my preferred method is to hold my pattern down and just trace around it with either a pen or a pencil. Then you can take and cut out both pieces at the same time just by holding your hand on it. Now, if you aren't comfortable enough with that, you can take your pattern and pin it to both layers of your cloth and cut around it and you'll get the same outcome. Either way is fine, just whatever you are the most comfortable with. Now that we have our pieces cut apart, we are going to remove the back piece and set it to the side. And then I'm going to trace over my details on this and transfer those to my project. Now to do this, I am using a piece of carbon paper. You can see that I keep having to move it around because it's not as big as my pattern is. Um, if you don't have carbon paper, you can either like use a light source behind it to help transfer this, or you could scribble on the back of your pattern with the pencil and then trace over it, and that will transfer as well. Now, I will tell you that that's going to be a light transfer that can be hard to see, but you use whatever is easiest for you. Now that I have my lines transferred to my project, I decided to go over that welcome word with a black permanent pen. This is just going to help me be able to see it once I finish painting so that I have my dimensions for my word. Now we get to do the fun part and that's the painting. I love painting these. I think it is so therapeutic. I just kind of tune the world out, put on my favorite YouTuber and then paint away. Y'all, these are so easy to make and they are so inexpensive. I love doing them for all the different seasons and all the different holidays because for just about three or four dollars, you can have one for every season. Now, I did paint my hat with a pool blue color. I thought this was perfect for spring, but you use whatever color you prefer. I painted my nose and my hands with a beachcomber beige, and then I took some melted chocolate and I painted the inside of my flower, and I did some like highlight marks on my nose and my hands. I came back in with some of that beachcomber beige and just kind of did some highlights by twirling it around the center. 
and then for my sign I'm going to use some watered down melted chocolate. I did put a little bit of water in it to thin it out. I want this to look kind of like wood, a wood sign that he's holding and I thought that worked the best. And then while it was still wet I came back with a chippy brush and some of that beachcomber beige and just kind of dry brushed over it. Now for the beard, I'm going to come back in with some white acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the top and the bottom part of his beard. Now you can leave it just like that. When we make gnomes using faux fur, we normally do have a solid white beard. But I wanted to give mine some dimension, so I came back with some gray paint and a little brush, and I just kind of did some lines that kind of swooshed down and made it look like the beard was trailing down. And then to blend it all together, I came back with my chippy brush and some of my white paint and just went over it and smoothed it out and blended everything together for my gnome's little beard. Now I'm going to go back and work on my flowers some more. I chose to paint my petals with a lemon yellow color and then once I got this painted while it was still wet I put a little bit of red in my cup with my yellow and I just kind of went around those edges did some lines coming out from the center something just to give it some dimension so that it wasn't so flat looking. Now that I am finished with my flower, I'm going to come back and paint his shoes with some of my black acrylic paint. And again, once that is finished, I'm going to come back with some white and a small brush and just do some highlighting on it. Then I took my pencil and I went back over those lines for the hat, but I didn't think that they were quite dark enough, so I came back with a really small brush and some black paint and just went around those edges and defined out my hat. Now, you do this however you want. It is your project. Now for my sign, I started off coming back with a black permanent marker and I filled in the letters on my word, but I didn't feel like that it stood out enough, so I took a white marker and came back and did some marking and I still was not happy with it. So then I took some white paint and my small brush and came back and painted in my letters and I liked how this looked. I even liked the black that was sticking out from the edges, so you can layer it like mine if you want or do it however you prefer. Now that our painting is done we are going to put our piece together and all we're going to do is take our bottom part. I like to flip mine over it's easier to work with because the top of this is a little more stiff since it has the paint and it has a tendency to shrink somewhat because of the paint. So I put my glue down along the edges and then I make the back of it fit the front of it. Now you're going to notice some wrinkles but don't worry about that because they will pull out when you start stuffing it. We're going to do this all around the edges making sure that you leave part of it open to be able to stuff. Then I'm going to take some old garbage bags and just stuff them into my gnome. Now I don't make it real tight. I just want it to puff out some and give it some dimension but you put as many as you want in. I like the garbage bags because they hold up well to the elements, but you use whatever you would like. Then we are going to close that up just using a little more hot glue. Now to make a hanger, I'm going to take some twine. I like to thread it through a darning needle. Then you're going to find an area about in the middle of this on the back. We're going to pull that twine through, pull the ends up, tie a knot, making a loop trim that off and then once you do that your project is complete so simple and super springy hey friends thanks for stopping by don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a foam comb from the Dollar Tree, a fuzzy sock. I got mine from Dollar General, but they also sell something like this at the Dollar Tree a wooden piece. I got mine from the Dollar Tree, but they have something very similar at Hobby Lobby. 
some acrylic paint of choice and a black permanent marker, some clear rubber bands from the Dollar Tree. I didn't end up using the string. A couple of cotton balls, some craft fur. I got mine from Pop Shelf for a dollar, but you can get this from any craft store. A half wooden bead and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing we're gonna do is take the plastic off of our cone and then we're gonna take our sock and we're gonna pull it over the bottom of the cone, making sure that you get the toe right along that edge. You don't want to have it on the bottom because it won't sit right if you do. Now you're gonna pull it up really tight and then you're gonna use one of your little rubber bands at the top of this to hold it in place. Now you wanna make sure that you get the heel of this all the way up to the top. I did have a kid's sock. This works a lot easier if you have an adult size sock, but I like the color of this one, so I made it work. Now we're going to cut that off at the top and then we're gonna cut it across making a straight line and almost like a square. Now I'm gonna take two cotton balls. We're going to remove our rubber band from the top of this and then we're gonna pull the sock back and push those two cotton balls all the way down to the bottom. These are going to be your feet. So you wanna kinda of mash them around and pull them out. Then you're gonna take one of your little rubber bands and wrap around this to form your foot. Then you'll pull it down and just kind of adjust it until you get it where you want it. Now we're gonna take a little hot glue and we're gonna put the hot glue between the cotton ball and the foam cone. You don't wanna skip this step because this is gonna hold your feet in place and keep them from pulling up when you're playing with this sock. Now, once you get it glued down, you're gonna start pulling your sock all the way back up to the top. Use your hand to hold it in place so that it doesn't slip. And then once you get it up to the top, you're gonna to put that rubber band right back around the top to hold it in place. And then we're gonna use some hot glue to glue it down. Now, you're just gonna put a stream of hot glue all the way around and hold that sock in place until it sets. Just be careful not to burn yourself because if this slips a little bit, you could get quite a burn there. Now to make our beard, we're gonna take our faux fur and we're gonna measure over two and a half inches and down two inches. And then we're just going to draw almost like a little U to make our beard shape. Now take your scissors and cut from the back, making sure that you only cut the backing, don't cut the fur. This is going to make it look more natural. We'll pull it down and we have a cute little beard. Now we can take our cone and figure out where you want this to be. I just kind of adjusted it so that the beard went all the way to the bottom. And once you're happy with the position, we're gonna take a little bit of hot glue, put it at the top of your beard and glue it down. Again, just make sure that you don't burn yourself. Now we're gonna take the other part of our sock and we're gonna gather it up at the top. I'm using the cut end of this. You're gonna make sure that it's kind of even and then take a rubber band and wrap around it a couple of times and this is going to make like a pom-pom for the top of your hat. Now, once we get this made and you're happy with the adjustments, we're gonna pull it down over the top of our cone to make the hat. Now again, since this was a kid's sock, it fit really tightly, so I ended up putting a little bit of hot glue in the top just to kind of hold that pom-pom on the top of this. And then you can pull down on the back as far as you can get it and use a little bit of hot glue to glue around the back and on the sides of your hat. Just don't glue down the front of this yet because we still have to add our nose. Now, once you get your hat glued down on the sides and the back, we're gonna take a half wood bead, put some hot glue on it, and glue it right in the middle of the beard for our nose. Then you can use a little bit of hot glue and glue the rest of the sock down around the top of the nose and the top of the beard to complete your hat. I wanted to give this a little extra spring, so I took one of the little wood butterflies out of that pack from the Dollar Tree. I colored in the center of it with a black permanent marker. Then I used Key West Blue to paint the wings with. 
while my wings were still wet, I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of darker blue and just kind of brush out from the center. And then I'll come back with some more of that Key West and blend it in. And this is just going to give my butterfly some dimension. Once it's dry, we'll use a little bit of hot glue to glue it to the hat. And with that, this project is complete. love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think. Your comments fuel our creativity. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wood rounds. I get these in a pack of three from Hobby Lobby and when they are on sale for 40% off, that makes them less than $3 each some of these wood pieces that I cut out using my laser. Now, I will put these in my Etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing them, but I'm only going to sell these pieces. It would cost me more to send you the wood round than it would be for you to purchase it separately. So I'm just going to sell these pieces. And if you decide that you don't want to purchase that from me, you can get these pieces from the Dollar Tree. I saw these when I was there this past week and they would work just as well. For that hello word, you can get that at any craft store, sometimes even at the Dollar Tree. For the word spring, you can just use individual letters that you can get at any craft store. And then for the flower and the little ladybug, you could use some little pieces like this that I got from the Dollar Tree, or they even have something similar from Hobby Lobby. We are going to use a variety of paint. You can see that I pulled several different colors because I wasn't exactly sure which ones I was going to use yet, but you use whatever fits your home decor. A soda can tab for the hanger. Some ribbon of choice. I'm using this butterfly ribbon from Hobby Lobby and this pink ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Some wood glue and my glue gun and some glue sticks. We're going to start off by painting our base. You can see that this one I'm using, I'm actually repurposing it. It's one that I used on the cruise to teach how to do shiplap lines, but once you paint over it, it works just fine. Now, as I mentioned before, if you're going to make one of these, it is so much cheaper for you to buy these wood rounds from Hobby Lobby than it is for me to be able to ship them to you. So I always suggest getting these in a the packs of three when they're on sale. They have them in the 10 inch and in the 14 inch. For this one, we're using a 14 inch. We are going to paint just the top of this and then we'll set it aside and let it completely dry. While that is drying, I'm going to work on my other little wood pieces. For my ladybug bottom and the center of my flower, I chose to paint those black. And then for my gnome hands and the nose, I like using this beachcomber beige. I think that turns out really nice for that. I'm going to paint the top part of my ladybug red, but again, you can do this however you would like. I chose to paint my flower this light pink color and then I came into the center of it with a little bit of purple and kind of blended it in to give it some dimension. And then for the letters that spell out spring, I'm using that same light pink color, but this time I took just a little bit of red on my brush and kind of blended it in to give me a deeper shade of the pink. Now for my gnome hat and for that word hello, I decided to use this pool blue color. I think it is the perfect spring blue. For the beard, we are going to paint that white and then we'll let these dry. Now, before I work on my sign anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and add a hanger to the back. I like to take a soda can tab, I bend it up, find the center, flood it with glue, and then let it dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to come back and make some shiplap lines on my sign. And the way I like to do it is to use a ruler and a pencil. 
I start in the middle, I go up and then come back down and then I take my finger and smudge those in and I think this gives it such a beautiful look that actually looks like shiplap. Now I'm going to take that ruler and on each one of my little planks there, I'm going to make a line showing where they meet. Now I don't have a rhyme or reason for this, I just kind of move back and forth. Then I add two dots at the top, two dots at the bottom, and I smudge them in as well. Now for the beard, I did paint it white, but I felt like that it kind of blended in too much. So I'm going to take my pencil and do a little bit of smudging just along those edges. This will help it stand out some. And then once we get that done, I'm just going to lay my pieces out and figure out where I want them to be. For this spring, I actually used one of my shiplap lines there to line that up. And once I am happy with my layout, then I'm going to start gluing it down. Now, I use this wood glue from the Dollar Tree. It will put these pieces together. It almost makes them bond together and it holds so well. I would not suggest using just hot glue on this because especially if you're going to be selling these, you do not want these pieces popping off and if you are where it's really hot, they can pop off. The wood glue works perfectly and again, if you're going to sell them, you want to make sure they're going to stay together. Now these little signs sell really well for me. These and the stuffed door hangers are some of my best sellers whenever I go to craft shows. So if that's something you're interested in, I would look at some designs for both of those kind of projects because they are really inexpensive to make. Once we get all of our pieces glued down, I decided that this top needed a little something. It was just a little bare. So I grabbed some ribbon and I'm gonna make a simple bow. I took the pink ribbon and I looped it so that I had two loops on each side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with that butterfly ribbon, but this time I'm gonna make it just a little smaller. I'll gather it up in the center, take a piece of string and wrap around about five times, tie it into a double knot and trim it off. Now we'll just fluff that out and we have a cute little bow. To attach it, I'm going to use some hot glue. You're going to hold it in place until it sets. And then I like to take my heavy duty stapler and put a staple inside the bow on each side and that's going to hold it permanently. Now I decided to take a white marker and I'm just going to go around my little letters and make some little highlight marks. I did the same thing on my gnome's hands and his nose. Then I did some wiggly lines around the hat just to give it some dimension and once you do that this project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.